Hi everyone and welcome back to Switch Up. Now as you know on this channel we like to try and find games that you might never have heard of and I think Circus Electrique certainly fits that bill. And if you're panicking about the size of your backlog increasing then you might not want to watch this video. We've teamed up with the publisher to go over everything about the game but as always we would never do a sponsored video on something we thought was absolute trash. You've only to go over to the Steam store page for the game and see the 9 out of 10 reviews and you'll quickly realise why I wanted to cover it. As always, if you want to give us a little kickback and save yourself 10% on any Switch games, you can get your eShop credit over at switchup.gg using code SWITCHUP. A tactical turn-based RPG with circus mechanics set in a steampunk London featuring a virus that's sending the local populace insane. Colour me intrigued. Why? Well, let's find out. In a world filled with games that are either one thing or another, it's easy to look at a title like this and say, well, it's Darkest Dungeon. And while it seems clear that developer Zen Studios have a love for that experience, they've certainly crafted something of their own. The story centers around Dr. Amelia, who's a reporter and niece to the bombastic ringmaster. She's accompanied at all times by her pet lion and drops some classic one-liners like the word fop doodles. Why is she here? Well, she's initially documenting the circus, but soon things progress into looking into the maddening. This strange ailment seems to be sending the population of London into a mad frenzy. They become what's known as the vicious, adorned with red eyes and with a mad rage intent on destruction. It's a very story-rich experience, and it's broken up nicely, with Amelia reporting on the events of the days in the form of newspaper articles, and if I'm not mistaken, it references the number of people killed, as well as also covering how your circus is performing. At this point, you might be sat there scratching your head, thinking, what on earth am I watching? Well, let me explain. Your circus is the hub of the game. From here, you can recruit new acts from the train station. You'll see lots of currencies and other things up in the corner, and you'll have to maintain these to be able to recruit upgrade, as well as craft different items. Why might you want to do any of that? Well, you have to put on a circus show, but you also have to go out into London town where you'll have to face off against those vicious. And let's start with the circus. This sees you recruiting different members and each of them has an amount of devotion. This essentially acts as the game's morale system. For the sake of simplicity, when you're in your circus and you want to put on a show, it's important to match up the pairings with synergies. One person might like working with a strongman, while on the same page not wanting to work with a flame breather. By placing them carefully, you build up good synergies. This improves the overall effectiveness of your show, and then you put points into one of three different areas, all of which again can be affected by the amount of morale your people have got, and then you launch it. Once the show's aired, you'll gain a number of rewards, as well as experience that you can use to level up. And by progressing through the levels, they gain new abilities. What's very cool is you don't just put on one circus show. As you move through Circus Electrique, you'll gain access to new performances. Some of them might be centered around horror or those which focus on more magnificent displays. What they mean to you as a player though, is that there's a potential for a much more impressive show, more experience, more coin, and of course more glory. With the fame of your circus being paramount to your overall performance. Your troop can be rested one at a time at the sleeping quarters. You can sack them if you don't like what you've got and your entire circus will gradually level up. Well, this all sounds very interesting, Mark, but is that it? No, not at all. Your performers then go out with Amelia, who is the story heart of the game, and they accompany her on her quests. The first one of those is going to London Bridge, which has mysteriously disappeared. To get there, you'll have to choose a number of available paths. They can lead you to hidden treasures, combat instances, which we'll talk about in a second, and also some choose your own adventure style moments where you'll have to make a decision and hopefully the right one. And that takes us onto the combat. This is essentially tactical turn-based combat that uses a line system as we've seen in similar titles. It also employs the morale that you use in all other areas of the game, that devotion. On the one hand, you'll have normal attack abilities. They can affect the health of the enemy and they may be limited to certain rows. And on the other, you have attacks which affect the morale. If that morale or devotion drops to zero, then the enemy will flee. It's easy to quickly look at the current status of the health and morale by pushing the trigger, and it adds a very tactical element to the experience. It's not a new system, but what's new here is how well the systems work on both sides. You'll have to balance your own morale, as the higher your morale, the more damage you do, the more your attacks will land, 
but also you'll gain access to some of your more advanced abilities. And when some of your skills directly use up that devotion, there's a real ebb and flow, a real risk and reward to the way you have to play. Again, a reflection, in my opinion, of the love they had for Darkest Dungeon, a game which does this so well. As briefly mentioned, paying attention to the position of your troops before you even enter battle is important, with certain passive abilities only being available on certain rows. The several different classes of Circus Performer will be familiar if you've played any RPG of the past, the strongmen being the tanks, the clowns having the healing abilities, and the flame breathers being akin to the magic users. The fights take place over several turns with the victor being the last man standing, and it's nice to see a quick toggle to increase the game's speed. This only really scratches the surface in terms of explaining the various mechanics, but Circus Electrique has an excellent tutorial system. In fact, the first hour or so is carefully guiding you through learning all of the different mechanics. It's quite important because the nuances really affect your outcome. What I will say is don't expect the classic roguelite experience. You won't be dying every five minutes and having to go all the way back to the start. And when you die, you can simply recruit a new group and carry on from where you left off. That includes boss fight. These can be brutal affairs, but the sting is certainly taken out by being able to simply recruit a new group and try again. Through fighting these crazed individuals, you'll all gain experience and there's a full leveling system for every single person in your retinue. Visually, we're looking at a steampunk aesthetic and things are running well enough. You wouldn't expect anything different from Saber Interactive. I haven't experienced any crashes, which is a relief in a sponsored video, but there's a film grain effect over everything which can be toggled off. Personally, I'm not a fan of that and I switched it off. And there are also filters which are applied to the music to give it a rustic feel. Again, these can be toggled on and off if you like. There are some really nice visual flourishes here. For a start, as the character artwork is lovely. The animations in combat are also nice, but it's the little snippets of newspaper article and the circus layout itself which really stand out to me, and I am a bit of a sucker for steampunk in general. Figures good, don't it? At this point in sponsored videos, I like to go to the developer's words themselves to have a look at what their inspirations were for the game. There's a really nice interview on GameWorldObserver.com in which Mel Kirk, the COO, and the head of the studio have a little chinwag. You probably know Zen Studios from their large number of pinball titles, and they've been around for 20 years. When asked how long it's taken them to make the game, they've been working on this one for more than two years. And by all accounts, it's been a real labor of love and something fresh and new. Now they've been working within the Unreal Engine 4, which is something we've seen used many times on Switch, and Zen have clearly got to grips with it. Now on the subject of the setting, which obviously is the steampunk London with a lot of these grotesque and slightly disturbing elements, they're asked how they came up with that. And one of their first ideas was that of having a circus, the performers and the artists as the main protagonists. The Victorian London soon followed on, as well as the idea to drape the whole thing in that lovely steampunk style. The interviewer goes on to ask about the link between Circus Electric and Darkest Dungeon, specifically saying what makes it stand out gameplay-wise, especially for fans of the genre. Ivan replies, we really like Darkest Dungeon, but we wanted to do our own version in our own style. So it's gonna be familiar enough to those who have seen or heard of this RPG subgenre, but we feel it will also offer a lot of new experiences and challenges. Finally then, as way of a little teaser, they talk about their next game, and apparently it's already been green lit and it will be the biggest RPG project they've ever created. Personally, having played many of the Zen Pinball games over the years, it's been a delight to play something completely different from this studio. They've clearly got a lot of talent and I'm quite excited to see what they come out with next. If you're intrigued, Circus Electric is £17.99 or your regional equivalent. It has a download size of 3.8 gigs and it will appeal to fans of games like Slay the Spire, Darkest Dungeon, which I've mentioned many times, and even the likes of Hand of Fate. If the idea of starting your own circus, putting on acts to gain experience, building up the synergies between your party and then heading out into London to fight in tactical RPG combat appeals to you, then Circus Electric might pique your interest. If not, then well, hopefully you've enjoyed your time watching. Thanks to all of you and to the publisher for sponsoring this episode. Let us know in the comments what you think of this one. We'll have a couple of codes to give away. A thanks to our patrons and to all of you that enjoy the channel. For all things Switch, all the time, keep it Switcher. Cheers, guys. See ya!